today. The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company. Happy to have you with us here today on the Weather Classroom. Tom Moore and Declan Cannon will take you for a little trip and we'll be looking at a couple of things that happen this time of year. First of all, winter precipitation. And there's lots of uh, types of winter precipitation. Of course, you all know it when it snows out there, it can be uh, quite a bit of fun, but what's not so fun is some of the other types of weather precipitation like freezing rain and sleet. We'll be looking at that as well. And we'll be looking a little bit closer at a storm that affected uh, quite a bit of the country and that was a, a blizzard that hit the northeast way back in 1888 so we'll be looking at that it changed the way that uh, some of the urban areas uh, transported people and set up telephone poles and wires so that should be a lot of fun as well well east coast residents are familiar with a particular type of winter storm called a nor'easter now, these storms can become extremely powerful lisa spencer has more the northeast during the winter months can be hit by devastating storms. These storms are called nor'easters because of the wind direction. The snow and rain they bring can cripple large metropolitan areas. The storms normally develop as low pressure areas off the North Carolina coast. The low moves to the north over the warmer waters of the Gulf Stream and pulls with it warmer air loaded with moisture from the subtropics. At the same time, cold Arctic air is funneling down from Canada. As the two air masses clash, the storm intensifies rapidly. Because of the storm's location, the winds blow from the northeast across the region, hence the term nor'easter. The storm usually parallels the coast and at times can deposit very large amounts of snow and hurricane force winds. The blizzard of 78 will long be remembered in the northeast. 27 inches fell in Boston, bringing the city to a grinding halt. That storm is regarded as one of the most intense of the century, a true nor'easter. Lisa Spencer, The Weather Channel. It was a long time ago. Perhaps you want to read about that period of time in your history books going way back to 1888. At that time, one of the worst storms that ever hit the eastern part of the United States came along in March. It was a tremendous blizzard, and Dennis Smith has more on that blizzard of 1888. The snow started to fall on Sunday, but the worst of the storm hit Monday morning, March 12. Most people were afraid not to go to work. In those days, a day missed meant a day lost pay or a job lost altogether. 400 people were killed in the storm, many because they tried to get to work. Food was in short supply. One delivery man delivered milk over 20 feet drifts into second story windows. Trains were stuck in huge snow drifts for days. By the time the storm ended, Saratoga, New York was buried under 58 inches of snow. New York City had 20 inches. Hurricane force winds had whipped drifts over 30 feet deep. A truly remarkable storm. One which will be long remembered as one of the most vicious blizzards in US history. Dennis Smith, The Weather Channel. Well, thanks a lot, Dennis. So coming up in just a couple of seconds, we'll have a look at specifically how snow, sleet, and freezing rain is formed in the atmosphere. But first, we'll have a check-in on the answer to that question. Well, as we mentioned a moment ago, we'll talk about the various types of precipitation that we have in the atmosphere. First of all, probably one of the easiest uh, forecasts would be the snow forecast when we have the air temperatures either freezing or below. You'll notice in this particular case on this day, we're looking at a very thick layer of cold air. So we do end up with the snowfall. The problems arise when the air starts changing. The temperature of the air starts changing because remember now the air is not moving all in the same direction. That would be nice at times, but that's usually not the case, especially with, approach, with uh, approaching storm systems. Now, we're going to make it a little more confusing here. This is how we actually get the formation of sleet. 
you'll notice we have three layers that we're looking at here. And again, the wind motions or the air motion is different at each layer. Below freezing air, down near the ground, we have above freezing air, above that. And then again, as we head above the warm layer right here, we start to head to some colder air once again. So we have almost a veritable sandwich of temperatures in the atmosphere. Let's check in specifically now with Jeff Morrow for more on sleet. One of the hazards of winter is a weather phenomenon called sleet. Communities can be forced into a complete standstill when the icy precipitation falls to the ground. A sleet with snow mix can make the road slick. Driving becomes a problem and a hazard. Sleet pellets are small, solid grains of ice which are formed from freezing raindrops. The sleet process begins as snow falling from a cloud, which then comes into contact with a thin layer of warmer air, which turns the snow into rain. The rain then refreezes when it re-enters the cold air. It then hits the ground as frozen water, known as sleet. I'm Jeff Morrow, The Weather Channel. So we've looked at snow, we've looked at sleet, and now we look at probably one of the worst forms of winter precipitation, especially for drivers. Absolutely no traction available when we have freezing rain. Now, this is what happens. You remember Jeff mentioned that uh, fairly narrow corridor of warm air above the ground. Now what we do is we actually broaden or we thicken the layer of warm air. So we have snow to rain. Looks pretty good. Looks like we're going to get rain, right? Uh-oh. Here's the problem. We have a very thin layer of air that is at either freezing or below. And because of that thin layer, the rain falls into this layer of very cold air. And we end up with the freezing rain, the rain freezing upon contact. You may notice in some of these freezing rain situations that it actually occurs on some of the exposed or the metal objects beforehand. So that's uh, what we're looking at. In this particular case, low pressure moving up from the south, and as a result of that, we have the warm tropical air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, and that's actually what this is. This is a cross section showing you some of the warmer air coming in, and it's above the ground, so we either have the snow, the sleet, or the freezing rain. Earlier, we learned about the Nor'easter, and the upper Midwest has its own version called the Alberta Clipper. Janetta Jones has more. This snow in Pittsburgh was caused by a storm system known as an Alberta Clipper. Many times during the winter, a large upper-level low-pressure area builds over Canada's Hudson Bay. The air rotates around that low in a counterclockwise direction. This causes the storm track to slide from western Canada down across the northern United States. The systems over Alberta, or thereabouts, are forced to move quickly along that storm track by the jet stream, hence the name Alberta Clipper. The Alberta Clippers are typically accompanied by snow and followed by a shot of cold air. Given the quick movement, snow accumulations are not too large. However, once in a while, they slow down and intensify, blasting the coast of the northeastern U.S. with heavy snow and strong winds. Janetta Jones, The Weather Channel. Well, now that we've seen a little bit about snow, sleet, and freezing rain, how the atmosphere actually sets itself up, especially over the lowest, let's say, four to 5,000 feet, let's look a little bit in on a particular forecast for a given week as we head into the wintertime season. Now, on this week, you'll notice that we do have a storm which is heading well east of New England, but again, it is tracking from the southwest to the northeast. That's our first storm, and you can see that there is even, in this case, some minor coastal flooding and some rain expected with the storm. There's not enough cold air. But if you were to change things around, well, then it certainly gets a lot more interesting, especially from a forecasting concern, because now we have a different storm. This will be storm number two. And what if we had enough cold air, which appears to be the case on this day? You'll notice that with some colder air feeding into the north edge of the storm out of Canada, strong storm system coming up parallel to the eastern seaboard, we have a veritable northeaster. Now you notice that's on Wednesday and Thursday. And as you head on into the weekend, believe it or not, on this particular week, we had three storm systems. And this one working to the northeast, the third storm, the most powerful of all three. That one brings the snow heavy at times a very heavy snowfall perhaps for parts of the mountains in central and northern New England. But as we talked about just a moment ago with that transition from the warm to the cold air and the layers of warm air above the ground, this is where you may actually find some of that sleet and freezing rain as you head up into the midsection of the storm coming all the way back into the eastern sections of Pennsylvania. Now what about a satellite view to show you exactly what's happening? Well, 
There's your first storm as it works on up off the northeast. And many times in forecasting weather, the satellite is the most valuable tool you can have because it, it tells you, it actually tells you right now where the storms are located, how strong they are, and we can tell that by several methods. And here's storm number three, just coming in off the California coast, but believe it or not, in the next three to five days, that storm will head to the mid-Atlantic coast and give a pretty strong northeaster to the northeast. Find out more about winter precipitation, Chapter 6. The Weather Classroom is a production of The Weather Channel. To order the companion book for the Weather Classroom, send $9.95 plus $3.95 shipping and handling to the Weather Channel Education Services, 2600 Cumberland Parkway, Atlanta, Georgia, 30339. Now, your local forecast, accurate and dependable from the Weather Channel.